Well, welcome everyone to um, uh, the launch of the 2013 World Disasters Report. Um, my name is Mike Adamson, I'm the Managing Director of Operations at the British Red Cross and I think we've got a fantastic um, report to discuss and hopefully have a really good discussion. We've got a great panel and I'll tell you a bit about them in a second. Um, we've also got about 120 people online, um, some of whom will be chipping in questions at various points in the proceedings. Um, and um, if you could make sure you've turned off your phones, um, if you've got them, and for those of you who really want to embrace technology, um, uh, the hashtag for this event, for those of you who are tweeting, hashtag WDR2013. So um, I know you'll all be madly tweeting away. Um, this report, it seems to me, is, is both very welcome and very timely. It's very comprehensive. Um, it wouldn't be a technology report if it didn't have lots of acronyms, so I won't be testing you on what PMRL is, SBTF, DHN, SCADA, Radian 6, etc. Um, but there's plenty of uh, acronyms in there. But what it really brings alive, I think, is the ways in which technology can play a role in response um, around crisis and disaster, around education, engagement, early warning, mapping, response, uh, commodity tracking, registration, public health. It's quite remarkable the range of ways in which actually technology is already helping us um, in our response to emergency. I think there's three key themes in the report, um, it seems to me, in terms of what's, what's there around technology and how it can contribute to resilience, the issue of access and the digital divide, and then some of the ethics and data protection issues and data integrity issues um, that actually are, are behind you know, some of the technology that we need to, need to get right. The numbers, every graph you look at when you look at a technology graph seems to me has got an exponential shape. Um, and some of the numbers that, you know, in the here are quite, again, staggering. Six billion mobile phone sub subscription, subscriptions around the world. Two billion internet subscriptions. 70% of Africans with a mobile phone subscription. Um, 20 million tweets during Hurricane Sandy. Quite extraordinary numbers. But also, hidden away, a really important uh, uh, insight as well, that in Central African Republic, two-thirds of the poorest 20% of the population, two-thirds of the poorest people rely on family and friends for how they get information, not technology. So really interesting issues there about um, the d digital divide. So um, what we're just going to do is show an introductory video to introduce the report. So I'm looking to my colleague over in the corner here, and then we'll introduce the panel. Today, 2.7 billion people are online, almost 40% of the world's population. There are also 6.8 billion mobile phone subscriptions. We are in the middle of a digital revolution that will change the face of the world. But what exactly are we changing? We have a unique opportunity to use these fascinating innovations to save lives. How? by making sure that people in the most remote areas of the world have access to the same information and technology that we praise in other parts of the world. Information and technology can save lives before and after disasters. We need to enable people everywhere to be better prepared, alert and ready in times of an emergency and immediately respond should one strike. In fact, our experience shows that 90% of the lives saved after a disaster are saved by local people. Yet this 90% of first responders are often in the most vulnerable situations and are least likely to have access to life-saving technologies. This lack of access has a major impact on people's ability to prepare for, survive and recover from disasters. We need to harness the power of technology for all. For that, we need to build partnerships between communities, humanitarian organizations, governments, and the private sector. We need to combine our unique expertise and experience in local knowledge, disaster management, emergency health, innovation, technology, public administration, and much more to strengthen communities in the face of disasters around the world. Using technology to improve humanitarian action and save lives is a responsibility, not a choice. So, um, what we're going to 
do is ask each of the panellists, who I'll introduce briefly in a second, to speak for about five minutes. Um, and then what we'll do is open it up to a Q&A with you and some of the people who are online and try and get a discussion going about some of the issues raised in the report, both the opportunities and the issues. Um, and um, the, on the panel, uh, to my left, we have Liz Hughes, who is the Chief Executive of Map Action. And Liz has worked in humanitarian and development work since 1995 for various NGOs, including the Red Cross Movement, and as a consultant. Um, she's been Chief Exec of Map Action since January this year. And Map Action is an organization that provides mapping services to the humanitarian community in disaster and conflict. Um, Imogen, this is the order in which I'm going to ask them to speak, hence the year. So Imogen, at the end here, is uh, Imogen Wall is a coordination, coordinator of communications with communities at UN OCHA. Um, she has been working for the last eight years in a whole range of international humanitarian response, including Haiti, Sudan, Indonesia, Ethiopia, and most recently the Philippines, developing and implementing projects that deliver communication and information as a form of humanitarian aid for disaster survivors. And prior to that, she's also worked for a whole range of organizations, both in the private sector with Reuters, but also the BBC um, and the World Bank. Um, and she's going to be talking a bit about the ways in which we communicate with uh, beneficiaries. Paul, at the end, Paul Keneally, is head of communications at the International Telecommunications Union, um, where he is head of communications and partnerships division. Paul started out as a journalist. Um, working with the Red Cross, both in the ICRC and the Federation, um, and has lived and worked in a whole variety of places, including the Caucasus, Caucasus Central Asia, the Balkans, Afghanistan, Ethiopia, Sudan, um, etc. cetera. Um, and he's got a particular interest in the role of the private sector and the role of private sector infrastructure playing an important enabling role um, in the way in which um, technology can be harnessed in disaster situations. Emily, to my left, is the editor-in-chief of the, and indeed the founder of the Crisis Response Journal, which is a multidisciplinary international publication launched just over nine years ago um, to foster communications about emergencies and crisis response. Um, and she's got a particular interest in areas around resilience and the way in which the whole um, sets of interventions and act humanitarian action is, is joined together and highlighting emerging best practice and new solutions. And then finally, um, uh, looking uh, surprisingly fresh, given that he's just edited um, the World Disaster Report, we have uh, Patrick Vink, who is um, from the Programme for Vulnerable Populations at Harvard University, where he's Associate Faculty and Director. Um, he's had 15 years of experience in professional and academic on international issues, including peace building, transition policy programmes, vulnerability analysis. Partic he's particularly interested in the way in which digital tools and methods for conflict, human rights, and humanitarian data collection can be used. And what we're going to do is ask Patrick to speak last and draw together some of the themes and highlight some of the issues and challenges that we need to address in order to um, harness technology effectively. So, great panel. Um, I've asked them to speak for five minutes each. I'm going to do a highly technological. I know I should be tweeting them personally when they're coming up to their five minutes, but I'm just going to do a little tea. Um, <laughs> in an old semaphore style. Um, and um, let's start with you, Liz. Take us away. Thank you.